All right, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're doing another project on the Pioneer 700. And I'm getting ready for winter this year. I'm gonna be doing a plow install. But um, to add on to uh, my previous video where I installed you know, a heater in the Pioneer, it doesn't do much good to have a heater without some doors. So I'm gonna be doing the factory soft doors. Uh, I have a lot of other factory options. Obviously I have the one piece poly windshield. I have the hard roof, I have the rear uh, cab enclosure, and this is all stuff that's designed to work together. So just got this shipment in. Finally, these were back ordered for a while. So here's what the factory soft doors look like. The reason I like these over a lot of the aftermarket options is because you can take them on and off relatively easy. The windows do unzip if you need to unzip them, but like now in the summer, it's easy just to take them off and put them in storage. And then when the winter comes, we can just pop the doors on. They do open and close. Uh, so, you know, in the winter when you need to get in and out, they open and close. And some of the aftermarket options, you have to like zip yourself in and out of the, uh, the UTV. And that's, you know, not really going to work for me. So spend a little bit more money to get the factory equipment. And today I'm going to show you how to actually install it. Uh, because it is a little tricky, but as long as you just take it a step at a time, it's not too bad. Okay, so uh, you'll want to download and print out um, the instructions, which do not come with it. Oh, and there'll be a link in the description to these instructions. And then you want to find the templates. So what we need to do in our case is they give you multiple templates depending on what uh, windshield you have. So the two-piece poly folding windscreens, obviously assuming you have a Honda windshield. Here's for if you have the glass windshield. And I have the full poly windscreen, so we'll pull this aside. And then buckle cover templates. These are the different templates. Obviously, again, full poly windscreen. So we'll go ahead and put these other ones aside here. It says select the Apple uh, template for the windscreen. And then we're going to tape the buckle cover template to the left buckle cover surface as shown. And I will show you how to do that here in a second. All right, so this comes in the box. These are... When the instructions refer to buckle covers, this is what we're talking about here. You can see what they kind of do is they kind of go in this area here. And they form like a, a place to seal, basically. So I'm not quite sure. I think I'm going to have to remove my side mirrors to do this installation, um, unfortunately. So even if I have to do that, I might try to find a way to reattach them because I do kind of like having side mirrors but this is the buckle cover all right so we've cut our template for our full poly windscreen so what we're drilling for is or what we're trying to do is cut out the notch to fit around the bracket for the windshield so that's why it's in a different spot depending on the windshield that you have okay so here is our driver side so like I said, it says tape. You don't really have to tape it as long as you hold it in position and trace with a pencil right there. And then what Honda recommends you do is they recommend drilling a hole here, a here, 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 and then using a coping saw to cut that out. If you have a better method, maybe just like a little jigsaw, you can zip this out real quick. You know, you don't really have to do that. Just, you just don't want to tear this all up. One thing to remember. And so same thing on the other side. I'm going to take this template, stick it on here like this. Line it up. And then we're going to make sure that it's lined up on this side. And we've got our template it up a little bit all right i mean you could almost even cut that with scissors again just following the instructions if you had the right pair of snips or scissors it might be easier just to kind of cut it out with those again do the same thing on this side so what i found works pretty good is just a razor knife if you just are careful you can kind of Set it down on the ground to do it, but just kind of, you know, punch your way through. 
and that actually works pretty good. All right, so you can see I've got my notches cut out on both of these. And then the next thing is we're gonna take our larger template, in this case again for the full poly windscreen, and these are your door stops. And you wanna you know, cut it out, lay your template on, and then again, trace out and cut the area out that you may need to for this piece. All right, so just so that this makes sense, what the door stop does, so when this is installed, it will go up in this area here. And so what we're doing is we're cutting out the recess for the top of the windshield mount. That's what we're doing. All right, so once you get your notches cut out, same thing, I just use a razor. Um, it says apply this foam tape that comes in the kit to the textured side. So it's gonna basically gonna go around, it'll stop here, this foam tape. And then we'll be applied like that. All right, so what I did is I cut lengthways, cut the foam strip in half because it's way too wide compared to what the diagram showed. I'm just going to lay it on here. Stick it in place. Again, and we'll move on to the curved edge of this piece, same thing. All right, so now we're gonna start installing some of the parts we just worked on. So we'll take a five millimeter Allen head and we'll move this bolt here. All right, so we kind of set this in place. We'll tuck this little edge under here. Let's just go over those. That wraps behind here like that. You can see the only issue is the template was a little bit off. So I'm just going to take a razor knife and just trim this up just a hair. And then this bolt we took out down here, you'll put back in. That will kind of secure that there. All right, so down here, so that little flap actually fits under this. See how it tucks in like that? Looks a little bit better. I'm just gonna get this bolt to go back in here. All right, so now the top piece kind of snakes up through here. You can see. All right, so this is how it should look on this side. So that goes in front of there. See how that fits around that tube and fits around. There's our cutout for that. And then it fits around the bar up here. Okay, so then you take these, these little brackets that they give you in the kit. There's one that goes right here, one that goes up here, and then one that goes in here. It wraps around the frame. Then we're gonna put a bolt through the front and a nut on the back. And that's what's gonna kind of hold this little plastic frame in place. All right, so I'm using a 10 millimeter wrench. Impact, just do that. Same thing, this one. And then we're gonna put one more up here at the top. So, same thing on the other side, except we won't have this oh crap handle to worry about here. And we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side now. Okay, so here's the driver's side, same thing. It's installed. All right, so the next step is to install weather stripping on the door. So basically, it's so when you close the door, that it seals the gap. So this stuff is supposed to go inside of there to help keep you know, the cold air from coming in. So I'm gonna close the door. You can see it closes on that. Pretty simple. You wanna take a little bit of rubbing alcohol, put it on the mating surface before you do it. All right, so this is what your rubber should look like. Just like I said, use a little bit of alcohol first, let it dry, stick that on there, it's double-sided tape. And when the door shuts, you'll see 
just like that both sides okay so this next part you definitely need two people and it's probably gonna suck so we're gonna set the brackets in place on the frame and it shows you in the instructions where to position them okay so the brackets will be taped into place and then what we're going to do is one person is going to take the door and we're going to set it in position on top of the lower door and then the second person is going to go inside and is going to take a pencil and trace around the bracket where it sits on the inside that way we know you know where the brackets need to be screwed in place permanently so basically if this is the outside of the door which it is not in this case this is the inside of the door so it's back, actually backwards um, you know the brackets will obviously be facing the inside of the door if that makes sense i'll try to show you what it looks like when we get it in position and it will make a little bit more sense there basically what we're doing is we're just we're going to use a little bit of masking tape to hold the brackets like this then we're going to uh, set it in position and take a pencil and mark where the brackets need to be screwed in place on the inside then we'll take it all the tape off and we'll screw the brackets down all right so we've got it taped into place the big thing to remember is that obviously just the screw where the screws are going to go have to be facing the inside of the door so when we get this on makes sense here in a second this is the outside so when that is pushed down on the inside of the door you can see the screw positions will be facing the door like that now I'm gonna go from in the other side take a pencil and kind of like scribe the lines with this masking tape you can kind of position these move them around a little bit if you need to all right so now we're on the inside Get the light on here see if this makes sense so you can see here on the inside, how it looks, and it's sticking out pretty far from the bottom. So I'm just gonna take my foot, push it against the bottom down there before I trace it. And up here, it'll be easier to trace. You can see right where it's gonna be there. So I'm just gonna trace those on, and by putting my foot here, it puts a lot of compression on the door. It holds it tight. The only thing I don't like, I mean, you can see some gaps, especially at the back here but you want to have the doors positioned as best as possible you know so this is the middle of a lot of gaps and it fits in the pocket where it needs to be okay so here's our little outlines on the bottom one's a little bit harder i just was able to get the top so what we need to do now is we need to take these off and i'm going to transfer basically this to the inside so you're going to make sure you know obviously this one is down here like this and then we're going to mark the holes where we're going to drill and then what we'll do is we'll drill a three three sixteenths inch hole and then you have to place one of these it's called a door wrap place that behind there and then we will use the included rivets in the kit to rivet this bracket to the door in the position where we marked like that okay so that way once it's in this will wrap up and that's what will actually hold the rod in place and then you un velcro it and then you can you know pull the door out of position and off so the key is make sure that this is lined up with the marks that we made both here and then that bracket up there Okay, so I've marked my holes. Take our 3 16 drill bit. All right. So you will need a rivet gun if you don't have one. It's real simple. This, these just go through here. And we gotta remember not to forget our bracket. That goes through there. And then it gets riveted in place. All right, so there's how that's held on there. Seems a little chintzy. See how that holds up long term. 
that's really the only way to do it, honestly. So the same thing up here, we're gonna take our bracket off, we're gonna mark our holes, we're gonna drill a rivet it. Now the rivets that came with the kit did not work with my rivet gun, but I had the same size rivets, they just have a different size uh, shank right here where it goes in. And most rivet uh, guns that you can buy, pretty cheap, I'll leave a couple links below, will have different size heads, but it's just easier for me to use these other rivets. I'm just going to keep firm pressure on the rivet gun. So you can make sure it's nice and tight. Okay. So there's how that goes. So this side's pretty much done. Alright, so there's some more work we have to do at the top of the door, but that's how that goes in. So basically you just... That's how you set that stuff in there. Okay, so we've got it secured with the rivets and it's kind of sitting in place. Next step, so once we close it, see it's kind of binding up up here. So there is another step. Um, get the door positioned correctly and you'll do this all from the inside. You'll shut the door and then what you want to do is just show you from the outside here is once you're inside and you have the door shut, you want to open this flap and push this up here to where it's sitting on top of the door. So there's a this hole that goes down through here. We're going to take 11 30 seconds drill bit and we're going to drill straight down into the top of the, the door to make a hole in the plastic. So we can put on another piece that kind of hooks that on the top. So that way we're not just... Because these rivets and this whole design from Honda is not the greatest and they will just rip right out of there if you put any kind of uh, serious pressure on them those rivets will just pull right out so that's why we're securing it another attaching point right here all right so now um I've drilled 11 30 seconds inch hole through there like i showed and so this is kind of the setup for this so you take this jack nut here you take a washer and the bolt i just got a little three eighths inch ratchet here and you thread it like that to where it's just snug not too tight then we're going to stick it in the hole like that and then what we're going to do is as you hold the 3 8 inch we're going to tighten this and what that's going to do is it's going to cause that jack nut to expand and lock into the plastic this is to do it until the bolt becomes tight so that's what we're doing that's tight. Honestly, this is a type of the, the type of nut they should have used down where the rivets are. Okay, so that's in there nice and tight. Now, what we'll do now is... This is the bolt that's going to go down through the door to secure it in place, and it uses a little thumb screw like this. It says to basically put it in a vise and, like, snap this into here. Yeah. So that basically just tightens that down. You can use your, your hand to do that. All right, so then, that sits on there. And just slide this through. I was able to get that about halfway tight. Honestly, not really crazy about the design of this whole door so far, but so that's on there. Uh, the last thing is this little J clip. It goes on the bottom of the door handle. And what that does is allows you just clips onto the door handle like that. So you can just go like this to open the door from the inside. From the outside, you just pull on this to open the door handle. So, so far, the one thing I really don't like is when you try to close the door, it hits this piece of plastic right here and binds up. So you actually have to like pull the top of the door out and then close it like that. And then it's okay. So there's a, obviously a little bit of a clearance issue on this side with this plastic right here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and like cut this out, 
completely. There is a big gap where air is gonna come in now though. That's the only issue. So I might use a different type of foam. Like I said, overall, not really, really impressed with the design of these doors for the price. They are better than some of the other ones you can find, but obviously these soft door tops were an afterthought for Honda, a cheap afterthought, you know, but some of us don't want to spend two, three thousand dollars for a set of hard doors. because That's just ridiculous. So I think these are going to work for what I'm doing. I'm just going to be using them when I'm plowing in the winter, you know, and you want the heat uh, in the cold of the winter. So I think it will definitely help keep the snow off me and the wind. But I think if you were doing any kind of like serious, you know, winter stuff, especially if it's like really, really cold all the time, you probably want to invest in the hard doors, just being honest. But that's how it is. You know, let me know in the comments if uh, you've installed a set of these, if you run into kind of an issue like that. Um, everything's where it's supposed to be. So it's, that's not really the issue. You know, I think it's just a combination of, you know, the way this setup has to work and how it has to seal. It's not bad. Like I said, not bad. So it's the same thing on the other side. Uh, I'm not gonna show the other side because it's the exact same thing. I'll just give you a quick peek at it when it's all done. And that pretty much wraps it up though. All right, so both doors are on. So here's how it looks from the inside. It's not too bad. It's a huge gaping hole down here in the corner. Just a little bit of cracks up along there. Close this side. So this side, you can see quite a bit of holes. Now, one thing that is kind of neat, but does you no good on the inside is there's, these tabs are actually magnetic. So you can seal this up against the metal and it will kind of like lock to the, the frame there. Uh, overall, you know, it will definitely help in the winter. You can see the front sealed pretty good. There are some areas like the holes down here that are gonna let a lot of air in. Um, I was expecting a little bit more out of a Honda, a genuine Honda accessory. I'm not gonna lie. I think there's other people that will have the same consensus as far as that goes, but it's not bad. I just wanted to put out a video on how to do it, try to help you out. I mean, if you, the instructions are a little, a little hinky, so you know, I figure some people do a little bit better if they can see a video of how to do it. So again, uh, leave a comment below. If you have any comments, questions, maybe you saw that I did something wrong that you could share to help other people. Uh, be sure to like the video if it helped you out. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can actually buy these doors and the rivet tool if you'd like to use that. And until next time, we'll see you later.